Heavy Cardboard, Episode 37, All the Games. Coming to you from Game Surplus Western Warehouse in Denver, Colorado. Welcome to Heavy Cardboard, where we talk medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx, and other related topics in the board gaming hobby, a la BGG Con. We're your hosts, I'm Edward. I'm Tony. Hey, man. You've got to, like, fill in everybody. Like, what is this Western Warehouse of Game Surplus? Oh, look to your right. Yeah. Well, no, I can't not look. Yeah. <laughs> there is a wall of games of new stuff that got here. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, gonna be uh, gonna be a lot of talking this episode. <laughs> uh, let everybody know how to contact us, please. Twitter at Heavy Cardboard, Facebook Heavy Heavy Cardboard. Just Google us, people. It's easy enough to find. Last thing though, uh, contact at heavycardboard.com. Shoot us some emails if you ever have questions, comments, thoughts. Uh, whatever. Hit us up. And our BGG Guild, number 2044, we're almost at 600 uh, folks and lots of good discussion. And thank you to Saslit for the iTunes review. We're getting dangerously close to almost 100 reviews on iTunes, so help us hit that mark by the end of the year. And speaking of being the Western Warehouse of Game Surplus, we do want to thank the great people at Game Surplus for their sponsorship of Heavy Cardboard. They're really wonderful folks, great inventory of game, a lot of imports, hard to find games. And they are the home of great games at great prices, so check them out, www.gamesurplus.com. Drop them a note at games at gamesurplus.com and tell them Heavy Cardboard sent you, please. Lots of S and games are en route, some more uh, obscure ones as well, so keep an eye out to our Twitter feed to hear about them first. She's only got a handful of uh, Noya Heimats unspoken for, so... And by a handful, you mean very, very few. Get on it. Yeah, you better email her quick. All right, what's cooking over there, man? Uh, besides BGG Con, because, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I wasn't there. <laughs> still recovering. Next year. Still recovering a bit. Um... I learned that for me, at least, BGG Con's more about meeting people and hanging with new and old friends and staying up laughing late until my sides hurt. Uh, the gaming's cool and all, don't get me wrong, but man, it really is about the people. And I scoff when I first heard about that, but I've come to really understand that. Cool. So uh, today is officially the worst day of the year for me, far and away. And it happened to fall on a Monday, too. Yeah, it always falls on a Monday. Oh, God, it's that the, sucks. It's the day after my two-week vacation for BGG Con and Thanksgiving. Gotcha. Always the worst day. Um, first day back at work. I think Elbert Hubbard said it best that, quote, no man needs a vacation so much as the man who just had one, end quote. <laughs> uh, first world problems and all that, I get that. But, yeah, man, I, I miss being on vacation already. So how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, Thanksgiving was cool. Uh, the Fryer family has a tradition that uh, hobbits would call second Thanksgiving. And uh, we usually do it the Friday after Thanksgiving, but this year we did it on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And uh, we had a house full of folks, the kids and their families come over, friends that don't have family in town or not leaving town right. and, and things like that. And we just eat and laugh and play dumb games that Heavy Cardboard would never ordinarily talk about. And, okay, and stuff nothing like wrong that. with that. So, so it was pretty fun, and I got lucky. I didn't have to drive oh. to Bennett. Oh, on wrong Thanksgiving kind of day. Lucky. So Sorry. yeah, okay. I mean, I got snowed out of going to Bennett. And you so, can you can tell when you reach Bennett because you can smell the depression. <laughs> and um, it's it's a good thing your wife doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> it's just east of hell. Uh, yeah. So uh, it, the negative side of that was my Thanksgiving dinner was a hamburger. But uh, That's the, nevertheless, you, that was pretty happy. You, you guys could have come over. <laughs> nah, you know it was a crappy day. We just uh, watched movies and hung out so, and ate hamburgers. <laughs> hey, there were worse things. Your Thanksgiving, sir? Um, well, we had Paul Chad uh, with us. He spent most of the week with us from Wednesday through uh, gaming on Saturday. And I spent about 10 hours or so between Wednesday and Thursday cooking. Uh, made 11 different dishes, uh, but it was totally worth it. The food was awesome. Mm. Um, and we, we got into an interesting, fun discussion about the process of winemaking while drinking a, uh, a Malbec that Chad brought up so with him. So tell me, does Grand Cru or Viticulture have it right? Uh, yeah, neither, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. What There's was more the discussion to it. about? Well, no, just like what the actual process is and, and how few wines actually benefit from aging in the bottle you know hmm. uh, the the overwhelming majority of wines are meant to be you know drank young gotcha relatively speaking so uh, and then that got us talking about uh Beaujolais Nouveau which is usually uh the, the week of Thanksgiving 
um, will have a bottle because it's supposed to, it's, it's fresh. It's not aged at all mm -hmm. or very little. And we couldn't get any because everyone sold out uh, before we remembered to get a bottle. So whatever. Um, while PC was here, though, um, we did something that we don't normally do. Whoa, and... whoa, whoa. We talk about that? Well, yeah, we, we oh. spoon. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, right? <laughs> no, uh, we watched some pretty cool TV shows. Uh, we watched a couple of shows on Auschwitz and Treblinka, um, which those were less awesome and more just whoa, you know. Um, watched Anthony Jeselnik's latest stand-up routine that was super funny, and uh, we started watching a new show called The Man in the High Castle. Yeah. It's alt history where the Axis won World War II and I act and occupy the U.S. And so far, I think we're four episodes in, and it's pretty pretty sweet. We also watched a documentary called "I Am Santa" about these guys who are Santa Claus year round. Like one guy legally changed his name to Santa Claus. Oh my god! Um, but no, it was a pretty cool little documentary. It yeah, was, it was cool. I'm oh my godding the concept. <laughs> yeah, it's but yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Fallout 4 continues to be one of my favorite video games. Okay. And last but not least, a couple days before we actually left for BGGCon, Amanda was complaining that her foot hurt. And she was like, if it still hurts when we get back from BGGCon, I'll go to the doctor. Well, one day at work, she was like, ah, the doctor's right here. I'll just go down and have him take a look at it. Had an x-ray, and I'm thinking, oh, great, just we're wasting money. And she texts me, hey, so I have a broken foot. Mm. Wait, What? Um, so yeah, so she spent, uh, BGG con walk in a walking boot that was less than comfortable and... That's why I call her Peyton Manning. Right, yeah. They have a lot in common. About the same arm strength, too. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. We, uh, discovered today that Arkwright's getting a 2016 reprint and that the company that announced it, Capstone Games... Mentioned that it won the 2014 Golden Elephant Award for Best Heavy Game, so I thought that was pretty cool. Why wouldn't they mention it? I mean, that's a prestigious award. No, and and yeah, thanks, Clay. Appreciate Absolutely. that. Uh, let's see. Sun Sunday night was beautiful because the uh, Denver Broncos defeated the New England Cheatriots. That's so bad. That's all I've got to say about that. Uh, Murr, a listener. And uh, and a friend we've never met. He seems yeah. like good people. He's man. an eye friend. Yes, yes. yes. He uh, let us know that on November twentieth, he completed three hundred and sixty-five consecutive days of at least one game being played. Let and that... during that period, he averaged four games a day, which is insane. The four game. Just think about. There are so many days to where I just have no interest. And you had a bad day at work. It's really long. You're exhausted. Whatever. Like, Amanda and I, with December tomorrow, we're recording this Monday, November 30th. That's right. With December being tomorrow, we're getting all souped up and ready to do the Advent Challenge, which is a game a day for the 24 days leading up to Christmas. And that would be a Herculean effort for us. So to imagine somebody doing this for 365... Yeah. I don't know if the, I'm more impressed or think he's more nuts, but well done. Uh, I that's, say nuts. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. And, and lastly, uh, Banker Dave's surgery went very well and he's recovering. He got out of the hospital <laughs> on uh, Thanksgiving Day and uh, is finishing his recovery at home. See you around the table soonish, dude. So we've heard in the past that there are a lot of people who really appreciate the whole what we've acquired, what we're hunting, and what we've been what playing, playing segment mm -hmm. uh, of the show. Well... For you people that do enjoy this, you're going to really enjoy this part because um, the, all the booty from BGGCon has arrived and stuff. So uh, get comfy, and for those of you who, who don't, fast forward half an hour and we'll catch you all then. First off, Niels is a listener in Germany. I kind of consider him a, a friend after Another talking to friend. him so yes. many times, so many subjects, games, family, work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I, I, I really think he's good people. Well, he heard me a few episodes ago say that I would love a copy of The Royal Goods. Or, Oh My Goods, as it would soon be called. Why have they changed the name on that? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I digress. Continue. So he offered to acquire that and send it to me. And uh, if there's anything else we wanted, I said, well, yeah. Well, uh, Pie Mouth Wowman would be great. Please. You know, because there's really no way to get those here currently at that time. So um, so he got two copies of each. One for you, one for me. Thank you, Nails. And... Um, 
uh, I talked him into getting a third copy of Pymouth Flowman because I figured he would like the game, right? And I would pay for that. Sure, as a thank you for, as a thank you know, you. muling or, or shipping or whatever. And then he proceeded to just go over the top, out of his way, to just totally blow that away and blow just amazing stuff. So here's what he did. He sent Pymouth Flowman to both of us. Awesome, great game. Sweet. Oh My Goods sent that to both of us. Good supply chain filler. Right. But he said, hey, I put a little something extra in the box uh, and, and something for Robin. I'm like, what? Mm, okay. Um, I was wondering how he got pictures of me. But, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, uh. So uh, for Robin, he sent um, a promo, Marco Polo, the new characters. Which she really enjoys, yes. the, the game. So he, that's, that's he heard us talking about how she likes it and everything. So it's just more tools for her to destroy me at that game. Because she needs that. And then, and then there was the wood box edition of Mombasa in the box that... Neil sent. Yeah, that was awesome. Oh my god! I just for the next like twenty minutes, I'm sitting there eating dinner after opening that, and I just go, "Wow, wow!" Every every few minutes, man, I was just it's just really thoughtful, nice guy. That was cool, mind blown, man. It was very very special and and super appreciated. So I really hope you can make it to Heavy Con, Neil's. I know your plate's full, but um, hey, you can stay with us uh, if you if you do make it to the states in May. That would be great, man. So uh, let's see. I I got a copy of. Rising Sun Railroads, and uh, I hear it's which cool, is a winsome, and I yeah. hear it's a little nasty. And I set it up the other day and kind of played through to learn just you know stupid few turns. Yeah, it could be nasty. It's going to be fun, man. Uh, I know um, Dave Eisen from the Guild. He uh, he was playing that. I think they played that at the uh, gathering at BGG. Con. Okay, or if not there afterwards, I think. But cool. yeah, so I saw it at the table nonetheless, and people were speaking well of it. In acquiring this, one of the one of the folks I was talking to was Paulo Soledade, because he had a copy up for trade, and and I did not I did not end up with his copy, but I did learn this from him. Hopefully for October of next year, they're looking at another What's Your Game release, but uh, but they're, nothing's in stone just yet. But apparently, it's going to be a a card game about mining in Brazil, so could be cool. Looking right. forward to it. I, I mean, we well, like th- we like stuff they do exactly. The, the, them with what's your game, and I'm interested in checking it out, just knowing nothing else. Uh, and then lastly, the U.S. Civil War arrived. Woohoo! Yeah, so... So, um, you've come 180, full circle here, I guess 360, whatever, um, on your thoughts on that. Because you were like, I really don't have yeah. any interest in that when we did our uh, But looking at show. Skippin's copy, I was just like, Christ, man, that map, how can I... <laughs> looking at all the places on there and everything, right. so... Uh, a couple things here. It's um, it is a two player game, but we can we can fit three or four in just dividing up uh, theaters of operations. And um, uh, I'm definitely uh, looking to hear a commitment from you live on the air here that we're going to get this reviewed in the near future. Now, near future for a game such as this does not mean close. Hold on, <laughs> first quarter 2016. Okay, it gets reviewed All on right. the show. All right. Here's what's weird. My copy was actually missing the Robert E. Lee counter. There was some. Count- what are they trying to tell you? Well, I don't know. It would, I mean, that guy's pretty critical to the Civil War. Um, Details. Like, if it was the Braxton Bragg counter, would I really give a crap? Hold well, on, hold on. We have a listener whose name is Braxton Bragg. His you, username is Braxton. Well, careful, <laughs> no careful way. now. Well, Bragg was a disliked, incompetent idiot. Oh, okay, but not the not the listener, no. just the general. Gotcha. No, okay. the, his, in, in the eighteen forties, his soldiers tried twice to kill him and failed and failed. So sadly, I, so his soldiers were more incompetent than he was. Uh, apparently, <laughs> uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest during the Civil War threatened to kill him if he ever interfered with his command again so like you give me bragg you don't give me lee um here, go north here, here's the thing about bragg okay i love U- this impromptu ulysses s awesome. grant put this in his memoirs <laughs> after the mexican-american war braxton bragg was you know in u.s army and uh, out on the frontier and he was a company commander he also was the quartermaster of that company so braxton bragg wrote a requisition for supplies for his company and submitted it to himself, the quartermaster. <laughs> he then denied, denied the request. <laughs> so as company commander, he resubmitted the request with additional uh, requirements, like, like additional explanations to why he needed the goods. He then denied it again. <laughs> he then forwarded the request, since he could not get a resolution with himself, to the post commander, who said, and I quote General Grant here, 
My God, Mr. Bragg, you have quarreled with every officer in the army, and now you're quarreling with yourself? So, like, anyway, I, I, I emailed GMT. haven't heard anything. I mean, it's been Thanksgiving holidays. I just, you know, maybe they can send me a lead counter or something. I don't know. I made my own. It looks great. Uh, but really, seriously. And I said to them in my email, I'm like, if you had left Braxton Bragg out, I wouldn't care. But Lee. But Lee. Oh, that was worth the tangent. I appreciate the history lesson. Anyway, that's what I've acquired. <laughs> or not, as it were. Yeah. What about you, man? Uh, as I said, get comfy. So we'll start with the thing that just arrived today. I bitched and moaned last episode, and apparently I rattled the cage enough. Lignum showed up. Twice. Today. Well, yeah, both copies. Yeah. I ordered one for uh, uh, my buddy Lyndon. And uh, anyway, so that arrived, and all the... Crowd start or crowdfunding extras and stuff. All right, here we go. These are all acquired either from Secret Santa, Santa Grogs, or mostly BGG Con. Okay. All right, first and foremost, this behemoth of a box sitting to my left over here, Mega Sim. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's as nice as I hoped it would be, and it's totally worth the 200 bucks it was. We don't know that. I'm saying production quality okay. wise. I'm not speaking to the game. Although the 18 player game at uh, BGG Con. The smell when you walked into the room was horrible. Well, no doubt. But outside of that, the game itself looked like it w- w- went great. It only played in 12 hours. They played the complete game. Wow. 18 players. So hmm. that gives me hope for Heavy Con. Yeah. All right, moving on. Pax Pamir. Uh, I know the designer. He's in my Geek Chat League. Plus, I know him personally uh, from BGG Con. And he taught it to us at BGG Con. Um, it's a riff it's different enough from Pax Porfiriana that I'm interested in. It was really, really good. Okay. Speaking of Pax Porfiriana, I had sold my original copy because I knew I was getting the collector's edition. It comes with a board for yeah. both Pax Premier and That's Porfiriana. That's a nice looking box right and there, And the bro. box is gorgeous, man. It yeah, really looks yeah. good. Really, really killer. And finishing off the, uh, the Phil Eklund line, got second edition of Greenland, which I know is a dice fest and yeah. all that. No thanks. Um, but I... It's fun filler type. Okay. Well, I guess it's more than filler, but you get the idea. Uh, got the copy of Pie Mouth Flowman right, uh, right. from Nil, so thank you. Through the Ages, got the new one. Right. The, the, a new story of civilization. Excited to try that. D Day at Tarawa. Uh, this is uh, kind of the second in the D Day uh, D Day on Omaha Beach, which is supposed to be one of the best uh, solitaire games out there. This is on Tarawa. As a Marine, Tarawa was the single bloodiest day in the history of the Marine Corps. So I kind of felt like I should have it anyway mm-hmm. um, to be able to see how just how rough that was, the, the simulation of it. Two uh, of the key games, not any of the big dollar ones, but Key Harvest and Key Thedral. Got both of those. Okay. Looking forward to those. Key Thedral, yeah, man. Uh, Runebound 2.0. So, well. I know you're not interested, but this was cool. At the uh, virtual flea market, um, I picked up, uh, I forget what game from this guy, and he's like, hey, I saw you were looking for a copy of Roombound 2 uh, Second Edition. Here, have this. And just gave it to me. Oh, and nice. I was like, well, uh, are you sure? Generous and cool. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. rock on. So, sweet. Uh, let's see, next, I bought a uh, fairly cheap copy of Tenor's Trail, used. But I got it simply because I figured we could give it away on the show. Right on. Uh, same goes for a copy of the coin game, A Distant Plane. Potentially, we're going to give that away in a future show as well. The Republic of Rome I got from our buddy Mo. Uh, speaking of Marines, um, it's a it's a game I'm interested in trying eventually. The Orléans Kickstarter Deluxe Edition arrived nice. while we were gone. And man, that thing's heavy. Yeah. There's a lot of wood in that box. Uh, Poseidon's Kingdom. Obviously... Yeah, what the hell is that? Well, it, it's Fragger Games. If you look up to the top right, we have Spellbound and Dragon Scroll. Amanda thinks they're adorable and cute, and they're actually somewhat fun games. On you know, okay. They're totally light and everything. Sure, sure. But um, anyway, um, this is the original Fragger Games edition. Durr, because I'm not going to buy Game Salute. Anyway, got that used. Uh, the next one I'm going to completely butcher. It's uh. a s- kind of crayon rails type game. Uh, Taiyuan Tensuyu, The Rise of the Inca Empire. I, 
hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. It sounded interesting and I got it cheap, so I thought I'd try it. Got Kaivai, along with the Kaivai expansion, uh, separately, but got them both, so I'm... Cool. It's something that uh, we both are anxious to play. Actually, um, <clears throat> Matt in England is who I got Kaivai from, and then Paul Grogan, our buddy, yeah. was nice enough. So he shipped it to Paul in the in England, in England, and then Paul muled it across the pond and hand-delivered it to me. So that was cool. And thanks to both of y'all for that. Santa Grog sent me No Peace Without Spain, right. which is a card-driven game on the Spanish Secession, which I've been wanting for probably the better part of a year, so I'm looking forward to that. All right, now we're on to regular Santa. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll go back to BGG kind of stuff here in a minute. Terra Mystica Fire and Ice expansion, Concordia, Germania, and Britannia expansion maps, Fields of Arla, and the Agricola France deck. Yep. So Secret Santa went far above and beyond, so that was awesome. Yay on all that. Definitely. Then uh, for you, I was thinking of when I got picked up Field Commander Napoleon. Sweet. It's a solitaire game, which I know neither of us are huge on, but I know you're a huge Napoleon nut. so Big time freak. Yeah, so I figured that'd be cool. Right on. Uh, Prime time, we get a review copy there. Um, I'm looking forward to being able to compare and contrast that to Networks, yeah. which we uh, recently uh, touched on. Speaking of review copies via Richard Breeze and our buddy Paul Grogan, Inhabit the Earth. We got a copy of that from R&D, so thanks there. Thank you, Mr. Breeze. Versa Generix. It's a game about Versa Generix, and, the, you know, uh, he was the, the guy who coordinated all the Gauls together against Julius Caesar and lost. But yeah, didn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a game I've been looking forward to for about two and a half years. It finally came out. Richard uh, Berg. Richard, yeah, Berg game. Berg, Borg, Borg, Berg, Berg. Uh, anyway, got that. <laughs> the Victory of Arminius, which actually was a throw-in from uh, the same guy who sold me versus Generic. So, yay. Visby. It's a little tiny little card game from Stefan Riesthaus, who also designed Arkwright. The big A. So I know nothing about it, and I was like, you know what? I'm willing to give it a try simply for that, and it's a tiny little card yeah, game. Yeah, I've heard good things, though. Eight pieces of wood or something like that. Right, yeah. It's, yeah. it's super tiny. Comes in a little Ziploc. Uh, the Snowdonia Daffodil Line and Trans-Australian Railway Expansion for Snowdonia. Durr. Okay. I had a print-and-play version of Daffodil Line, but... Why not? It was like six bucks, yeah, eight sure. bucks, whatever. Absolutely. Also got a couple promos for Village, Castles of Burgundy, and Orléans. Um, uh-huh. The Orléans one, I actually got you a copy of as well. It was a uh, something from Essen. Oh, very so, cool. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Got the Jenga Dice Tower, which it was twenty bucks, and this guy made like four of these, and I thought it was totally hokey at first, but then I started looking, and dude, it's pretty sweet. It really is. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It looks, it works really well because we used it during BGG Con. So yeah. Anyway, got that. Gil Hova was nice enough to uh, to give us a copy of Bad Medicine, just a fun little filler party game. So that was cool. Uh, Andrew from Spiel Pro was nice enough to mule. He went to Essen, and he was willing to mule back my copy of Steamrollers. So thanks to him for that. I got a copy of Jiraku. Which I know nothing about the game. Whoa. Ordered it strictly for the artwork. Uh, Nicholas, when oh, he was yeah, here, yeah, 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 he yeah, brought yeah, that. Yeah. And gorgeous. I saw, you know, absolutely gorgeous. gorgeous. So I was like, fine, I'm just going to order it. There you go. Um, all right. And now from here out, except, well, there's one more. Got a copy of the Advent Calendar. Yeah. Which, dude. Are you sure there's only one in there? It's Jesus it's lighter Christ. than air, but it's, it's, it's bigger than, the, it, it's about twice the size, twice the depth. As the old Fantasy Flight coffin games for a 24 promos. I, it's like the size of a 1982 VCR. It's gigantic. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, whatever. Um, it has some promos in there that I want. So cool. Yeah. All right. So now the free games from BGG Con registration. When you oh, yeah, actually yeah. go, you, right. they have they give a bunch of it. Right. So we got Convoy from Ignacy. Number Please, Modern Art the Card Game, Yardmaster Express, 
High Society, Dragon Master, Ophidian 2350, a copy of Homeland, copy of Sons of Anarchy. We also got a couple of uh, postcard games, postcard war games. Huh. Yeah, that's it. So, surely, after such a list, there cannot be anything on your anticipation or hunting list, is there? It doesn't matter if there is or not, because Amanda has informed me that we are on hiatus. I see. We, we are on a moratorium for bo- buying games for hunting the Hunting season over. <laughs> yes. And uh, I was on Twitter the other day, and uh, I was told, uh, it was Michael Mendez from Tasty Menstrual, he was like, uh, oh, the, you know, you, you, oh, yeah, the yeah. one's still there. And I'm like, oh, I, you know, it's yeah. not going anywhere. It's just it's just tempered for right now. So there are some games that I'm still looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll be honest, if I don't get another game until next Essen, I think I'm covered. But we, you and I both know that won't happen. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm keeping an eye out for things. And speaking of which, the new uh, anticipation list for 2016... I'll probably be doing uh, sometime over the uh, Christmas break. Cool. So, uh, so yeah, there's plenty that I'm anticipating, but yeah, nothing right now. We're good. <laughs> you? Uh, just a couple things. What's your game? Sent, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Nippon N- and Signori, the review copies yes. for us. Those aren't here yet, but they're on their way. Um, something that was getting a buzz around BGG Con might be interesting to try. King Chocolate. I yeah. Oh, uh, I I'm gonna talk about that later. Okay. Yeah. The King Chocolate and Ponzi Scheme, both. Ponzi I'm, Scheme, I'm yeah. really, so, yeah. Um, Automania looks totally stupid, but there might be sl- something of a game in there, so don't know about that. I don't know that. It just, it looks silly. The, the artwork yeah, yeah. looks cartoonish and, you know, it, all that. Yeah, it, it might obscure the fact that there is a, a game there, not necessarily a heavy game or right. anything like that. Well, kind of like the cover of Inhabit the Earth looks totally like a kid's game, but it's very much not, you know, so I, I get that. And um, and corresponding with Velma today, I secured my copy of Noya High Matt. Oh wait, you you're getting a copy of Noya? I thought Matt was getting well, you a copy. Well, let's see. It's only been like a year, so <laughs> <clears throat> made my own. <laughs> if anybody wants my homemade copy, let me know. Uh, yeah. So uh, so let's uh, let's talk about the games we've been playing then. And let's just, let's, you do one, we'll bounce back and forth, we'll go back and forth. You Um, start, sir. Because you and I have not played many games together over the last three weeks or so. That's very, very true. We haven't seen much of each other. That's very true, that's very true. Quickly, the games I played with the family on Thanksgiving were... Sure, Power Throne. Riff Raff, No Thanks, Ink and Gold, and Hanabi. Lots of good laughs there. Nothing wrong with that. It was a lot of fun. Nothing wrong with that. Um, let's see, the subject of my trailer today is going to be 18MS. So we played a four-player game of that. It was Brain Goo, his second, John, his first, and uh, Tony KR, who we, I, we can consider a veteran 18XXer at this point, and myself. And uh, so, anyway, uh, more to come on that later in the show. Paul Chad did text during our play. So he was uh, there in spirit. Yeah, he was like, man, I wish I was there instead of getting on an airplane in Vegas. But um, I felt bad, you know, for a minute. Right, and then you got over it. And then I, you know, had to focus on something else. So, speaking of train games, the uh, first game I played at BGG Con, 1846. Nice. I was originally uh, scheduled to uh, kind of teach and run GM two different games. One of them... Simultaneously? Yes. Uh, one of them, and so this way I didn't have to play and work my brain too much. That didn't work out. One of the games, uh, they ended up playing something else, and the other, uh, I had to fill in to be a fourth. And it ended up being an awesome time. I got a chance to play with uh, a couple of listeners, Asher and Marcus, mm-hmm. and Bill Gallagher, who's a big name 18xx guy. Uh, and he was super patient with... Mm-hmm. Uh, with Marcus and, and me being exhausted already from traveling all day and all sure. that stuff. Um, so that was a blast. We had we had a great time. And I did horribly. Um, literally, from the very first move of the game, I was out of the game. Because of something I tried. B&O. I started and just... I teleported the... Uh, it's To its teleport and, and laid track and spent all my money and realized... Oh no... Now I'm screwed, and I played catch up the whole game, and I almost got my head above water once and didn't, and had an awesome time screwing myself <laughs> and learning a lesson on what not to do in 1846. Right so on. hey, that was cool. That was a good start to 
heavy con- or uh, it's a BGG con. It's a BGG con. All right. Yeah. So what else? Uh, we played the Spiker Stadt. That was on uh, Brinku's list of felds to try. So and it'd been a long time, and it reminded me too long since playing that uh, very simple, elegant auction game. I really, really dug it. We played without the expansion, so we just played the basic stuff. Which, I, in my opinion, is the way to play it. Well, I, I love the cards that the expansion adds, but I don't love the additional auction because I, I just feel it takes away the focus of the of the simplicity of, of the, the elegance of the main design, so... Spiker Stout was a lot of fun. Cool. I killed them. <laughs> uh, well, here, let me hit a couple here. Shoot. Uh, Pax Pamir, like I said, Cole taught us that, and that was that was really cool. Uh, Reef Encounter, Northern Pacific, SNCF. Um, Northern Pacific Yeah, is, this is what I want to hear about. It's starting to blossom. Like, when we first played it, it was a five-minute filler game, and that was it. It's just moving down the line, and that's it. I played it with, let's see, it was uh, Minneapolis Matt, it was Nicholas, and I, Cineful, on Twitter. And really, it was thoughtful, it was thought-provoking, and it really is starting to be... The game is more in each other's heads than it is on the board. <laughs> sure. And it really it really started to, to really open up, and it ended up being like a 25-30 minute game, but man, it was sweet. That was cool. That was very cool. That is wicked, man. Yeah, that was, that was cool. It's a, a social experiment, too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Right. Let's see. The Robin and I played uh, the Invasion scenario from Orléans. Invasion. Orléans, That's Orléans the expansion, Invasion. Right? Yeah. Okay. It's the co-op. And uh, so, yes, I played a co-op with my wife because, you know, I can't defeat her. I think <laughs> if you can't beat so, him, join him. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> It was pretty cool, man. It was pretty challenging. We did not win, um, but we came closer than we thought we would, but kind of not all that close, honestly. Well, I, the key to a good co-op is it can't be too easy. It's got to be hard. Right, right. You, know, it, it you should hard. fail far more than you succeed in a, in a good co-op, yes. I would think. She was counting on me to earn money in the game, and as you know from economics. That's, yeah. that's dumb. <laughs> uh, so a game I never thought I would have... Uh, played, um, ended up playing with Bill Corey, Amanda, and Paul Grogan, actually, uh, above and below. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to hear about this because, like, I'm not, I don't know if I want to play this or not. Okay, it's, you know, the. Cause it's totally not me, but I'm somehow okay, interested. When I was a kid and you were a 20 something, the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Right. Right. Kind of like that. Um, like there's Aladdin. What's that one? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights. Yeah, but this actually has decisions in it as okay. opposed to that. Okay. These matter. Um, so it's you're building, you're building uh, like rooms above and below ground and right. whatever. And it's uh, somewhat worker place. Is it where? Uh, I'm getting. Let me let me think here for a minute. Uh, not really. Not really worker placement. It's more or less. No, actually, it is. I'm sorry. It is worker placement. Action selection. In, in, right, in, in some aspects. And you can choose to go on these little adventures. And if you do, you you take the little, you know, tile, and then it has like six different numbers, and you roll a die, and whatever number you roll, you look up in this in this bound book, this spiral bound book, right, and somebody right. reads you this, and you have choices. Right. And whatever you do, and then you send adventurers, kind of like Forge War in that respect, and you have to roll to be able to succeed and whether or not you succeed well or succeed just barely or if you fail mm. uh, you get different things different things happen right. and it's just it's it was it was cute um i don't know that i need to play it again it's not okay. my type of game it's totally not me either do i need to play it once i think it'd be worth it for the experience um the people we played it with Again, Bill Corey with his voice. He has like him and Eric Summer are like the two, yeah. you know, voice guys. This um, is CNN. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he he actually played it up and everything. So every time Amanda, who was sitting on his right, went on an adventure, the player to the left gets the nice. Book. And so he he did it in all voices. <laughs> and then we did little sound effects and all, you know it was just goofy, all silly right. fun. That sounds and, cool. And Paul had a you know anytime he got to read, you know has that British accent. Sure. So yeah, it was it was a lot of fun in that respect. It was more the people than the game. Sure. But yes, it's worth trying. Okay. I would say, but it's absolutely the antithesis of something that we would feature on the show. 
Okay. So, above and below. There, go. Uh, Royal Goods, Oh My Goods, played more of that, and um, I finally got a really good supply chain going and was loaded with cash, man. So nice. Yeah, it was really fun. It was it, really cool. So it's, it clicked? It clicked. Okay. Yeah, so supply chain filler. Cool. It's awesome. Uh, Isle of Sky, played more of that. Speaking of which, that's one of the Advent Calendar promos that I'm going to give you. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah, so I, I really enjoyed our play of that. Uh, yeah, you know, I've taught it to new players several times, and I've played it several times now, and um, I've enjoyed it. And my, my, I guess my advice or whatever thought might be, if you use Carcassonne to teach people games, try teaching with Isla Sky because it's got more going on than Carcassonne does. You know... Carcassonne, I think, was the very first hobby game. Uh, the like Arkham Horror was the first one that I got into, I guess, kind of. But Car- Carcassonne was the first one we bought. And we played it one time, and we were like, "Oh, this is kind of boring." Um, but again, we <laughs> right. didn't know anything, and so we, were, right. you know. But yeah, so interesting. All right. So I played Here I Stand uh, over the course of two days. We or it, Here You Sit. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, we play four hours Thursday, four hours Friday, and that's scheduled like that so that we play from 8 a.m. to noon each day. So by noon, you have your whole day in front right. of you, yet you get this monster game in. Did you co- accomplish the game in that time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah totally cool. did. Cool. Um, it helps with the guys that I play with. It, this is an annual thing that goes mm-hmm. back longer than my participation sure. and i got invited one year and once you're invited you're in uh so i played uh, the ottomans again and once again suleiman ended up in a dungeon but <laughs> but he did not end the game in a dungeon um i got a funny story on that later but anyway here okay. i stand it was fantastic played i say we played noya Heimet, but again when we talk about the gathering um not really uh okay and um uh, my my uh, trailer is Euro Crisis. Right, and played that a couple times as well, and I'll speak more on that in a little bit. Apparently, I'm the family tumbling dice champion now too. Nice, Congrats. yeah, that was cool. I got the wife that for her birthday. She That's... loves she loves anything with dice in it, so that was kind of cool. It's a fun little dexterity, yeah. die weird thing. I, I enjoy it. I'm also the family crokinole champion. We're currently reigning. Currently okay. reigning Current. in the family. Yeah, but I still beat you. So love that game, man. <laughs> oh, Crokinole is, yeah. is just... We need to... After Heavy Con, Heavy Cardboard, Crokinole Boards. Just saying. Okay. Moving on. Hmm. I taught uh, Grippin Patchwork. Just, like, for what it is, 30 minutes. Pretty cool. I, I like all flat Tetris. Very cool. <laughs> it's uh, I I played it once and I I still think I finished negative, um, but I really enjoyed my play of it. And like I said, the next time I hear something negative about yeah, it, it'd be yeah, the first. Yeah. So let's see. Um, here's a game that I don't know that you know I played. Or I, you might not know of it. Low and hurts. Oh yeah, I know of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the board game group guys uh, turned me on to that, mm-hmm. and that was mm-hmm. that was area. Yeah, I got smoked, but enjoyed it. That's an oldie, too, right? It is. Uh, Yeah, definitely. You can tell just by the artwork and everything on it. Um, And also got a a full eight-player, three-race game of Turf Master in. That was cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. How'd you do? Uh, I finished next to last the first race, fourth the second, and took it home in the third. Nice! But ended up second overall. So I'll take that. Okay. Out of eight. Yeah, you betcha. That's not that's not a bad little racing season. It's not. I He he was put out to stud afterwards. Oh. Felix, my, my horse. Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Felix. I <laughs> uh, played your favorite game, Caverna. With, oh, uh, with a couple tell of me folks. more. Not, no, don't. It's um, okay. Dude, super fun. I, I get it. You don't understand it. Not, you know, not my problem. Um... <laughs> If Matt was a was a shorter man, I'd swear he was a dwarf because he's just got some unnatural ability just to like pfft, kill everybody in that game. Cool. Dungeon Raiders. Have you ever played that, dude? Dungeon Raiders. Dungeon no. Raiders. Stupid fun. Twenty minute card game. Um, in the space of the game, there are often actual decisions to make in your play, and um, it, it is. Uh, it, it has a oh. Sorry about that element in it too. I really, I, I, I too, big fan, big fan of just silly little filler game. No, I, now I'll have to try. Right, it. Right. I, I, I know we will play Dungeon about. Raiders. All right, cool. And with the right five people, it would be just incredibly fun too. Okay, right. cool. 
Uh, speaking of fun, dude, played two games of Time's Up. And if we have time, the Time's Up, it's a party game. Okay. Um, if we have time in the podcast, Whoop, time's I, up. I want to talk about both games because truly both of them were two of the most memorable events of the entire convention for me. Interesting. R- truly. Okay. Okay. Tinner's Trail. Awesome. Banged out some of that. Played with my chart that I made up. What'd you think? I liked it. I did too. I, I, I thought that was uh, well done by you. Game just looks great on the table, man. It does. Yeah. Uh, played Southern Rails in Kansas Pacific with some guy named Yeroon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And Amanda. Amanda beat both me, or me, Chad, and Yeroon at uh, Kansas Pacific. Right Needless to say, bragging rights for her. Yeah, absolutely, man. Because uh, he's hard. He's tough to beat, man. I'm sure. Yeah. That was he good better stuff, be. Right? Uh, we played this together just this past weekend, Mombasa. Yes. I finally got a chance to play it. Um, I saw it played a lot at the con. I uh, never got a chance to play it, but um, yeah, the first game just didn't go well, but I I enjoyed it. Right, you the were struggling. S- the second game, I struggled far more, really? yet enjoyed it more. Because we played Friday, and then you played again Saturday, and I wasn't here. Right, and I, I tried to diversify and kind of got a little scattershot in my, mm. in my strategy, okay. and went down in flames and did terribly. But I enjoyed it because the game made more sense to me. So yeah, it's it's a game that definitely has more plays in that I'm I'm looking forward to playing. Uh, the first time I played it, I was a little underwhelmed. That was when Nicholas came out after Essen, right? And uh, it was the last game of the day, and it was a long day. Maybe that had stuff to do with it. I don't know. Um, but uh, I don't think I was alone because when we played Friday with our group here, uh, both Amanda and I both said, "Wow." I'm enjoying this a whole lot more than I was that night. So uh, definitely looking forward to get some more more plays in there. I think there's a lot to like there. It seems like a solid Euro so far. Agreed. So uh, something that wasn't originally planned uh, when I went to BGG, or before BGGCon, was I got an email from the head guy over at Artana Games and asked if we wanted to get together a group of four people for a game called Chronicles Origins. Hmm. And it's a legacy game where it's a co semi co op <clears throat> to where you're you have a uh, a tribe in prehistoric times, and it's kind of a storytelling game and all that. So it was it was cool to experience. It's very much not our type of game, gotcha. but it was cool to be a part of that whole kind of play test and you know the prototype thing that's supposed to be hitting Kickstarter early next year, I think. Um, but yeah, it's a legacy game, and it was cool to experience, but yeah, not not my wheelhouse. Okay. Uh, we played this one together, too. Uh, Paul Chad whipped it out. The old splatter game. Whoa. Can. Oh, yeah. Con, or can, or whatever. It was pretty cool. I enjoyed that probably more than anybody else at the table. I enjoyed it as, as well. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's... Yeah, that's a quirky game. It was wait, it was splatter early yeah, splatter yeah. being quirky. Stop. Dude, there's some serious logistics in there. There is, um, and, they, and that's another game. Silly looking art, but there's a real game under there. It, I think uh, PC mentioned it as Roads and Boats Light, and I totally get that. Totally get I, that too. I, I really do. Yeah. Um, so apparently, yeah, I, it's super cheap. Like, can be found for less than forty bucks. Yeah. Um, so if the quirky idea and the quirky art of a game like bus doesn't turn you off and you're looking for something lighter it's only one play don't get me wrong but i could see myself wanting to to yeah. get the pick this up and play it two or three player as well and we were all terrible at it. i don't think i think you grokked it first and i grokked it second because our scores were 13 13 Zero zero. <laughs> we were worried that the game would end zero 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 zero. zero, zero. Yes. On the second to last turn, you scored thirteen. On the last turn, I scored thirteen. Right. I mean, it was just, yeah, fun game though. Yeah, that totally. was cool. Um, so uh, I mentioned I played Times Up twice. I played it once uh, with a good group of folk, which I'll talk about. But uh, a fake artist goes to New York as mm-hmm. well. It's a little. I think it's a Japan brand yeah, yeah. game. I think, but like a little, little pink box or something. Yes, but dude. Just, again, one of the highlights of the convention, not so much the game itself, yeah. but just the interaction and, and the way the game went down was hysterical. It was a lot of fun, cool little, you know, 15-minute party filler game. 
Uh, the last one on my list is the edible card game, Pie Mal Flowman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, the art looks edible. Right. It's beautiful. It's, uh, beautiful, I, fun game. Yeah. Uh, game of the year as far as artwork, I think. It's mm-hmm. definitely in the conversation. The Painted um, Elephant Award. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, again, played Euro Crisis again and Mombasa. Yeah, that's that's all I got. So right that's on. still it's a lot of games in the last couple of weeks. So understand, there's a bit of a crisis in Europe, or what? What? Yeah. So a game I played a couple times at BGG Con, and I figure uh, uh, I'm not going to get a copy for a little bit after the expenditures. So I <laughs> thought I would I would talk about it now, and that's Euro Crisis, designed by a guy named Galgor, published only by Doppeldank Spiel De. Whoa. Uh, there's no U- U.S. publisher at this time, but they oh. are searching for one. You can get it online though. You can. Uh, it plays three to four players, and truly, I'd say it matches the time. It plays in about ninety minutes. So, Euro Crisis is a thematic, satirical look at the financial crisis that some European countries find themselves in. Each player takes on the role of an unnamed bank, where these banks give loans to the four countries in the game to help themselves profit. But at the same time, these banks are manipulating the various governments to make sure they walk a fine line between defaulting on their bank loans, which causes the players to lose the income they've generated via those loans, and having the country too stable where the loans that the player can give aren't nearly as lucrative. The game plays over three years, with each year having four quarters, and in each quarter, players will secretly select a single action to take. Each player has an identical hand of eight cards from which they choose which action to take for that quarter for a total of 12 actions in the game. Between those eight cards, there are five different actions a player can choose to perform, but they can only use a card once each year. Some of the cards have multiple copies of them, others only single copies, and you only get them at the end of each year, so after every four actions. Hmm. The five actions that you can choose are 1. Borrow money from the European Central Bank, which essentially is getting more loan tokens to be able to loan to the countries, and that's how you generate income. Second thing is actually issue those loans to one of the four countries. You place those markers that you've acquired, and that's how you're going to make your money. The amount of each loan will uh, will pay is based on the position of the country's debt marker. It's okay. a little marker on, on its, that country track. You can hit the black market and buy guns and weapons or gold. You can rearrange the government of one country. And lastly, you can invite politicians to your pool party. And afterward, they'll happily conduct the reforms that you propose. Well, because you have pictures of them. Obviously. In other words, this is where players can manipulate the debt marker of each country as well as the happiness marker. Push the agenda that you want. More conservatives, more socialists. Raise or lower the taxes and make the liberals or the communists happy. The choice is yours. So with the gold that the banks buy, i.e. the players, uh, the players then use it to bid on various state properties within the countries that the banks have invested in. These properties go a long way towards helping the players win at the end of the game because it's the only part of the game in which you get full points, victory points, at the end of the game. Everything else counts half. Hmm. But beware of too much unhappiness. If a country's population revolts, players then get the the opportunity to either supply the government or the rioters with weapons. If the people rioting end up with more weapons than the government by a factor of three, then those properties that the players invested in get removed and you lose those precious points that you so bitterly bid for. Youch. Finally, if the debt marker for a country ever hits the end of that country's chart, the country performs a debt cut, and all those loans that you were banking on, pun intended, to make you uh, heaps of money on your next turn, yeah, you just lost all of it. And if you go too far into the negative, you're eliminated from the game. Here's an idea. Work hard in making sure that that doesn't happen and you wouldn't have to stress about it, eh? As I said, at the end of the third year, players count up the points that they've earned via the properties that they've invested in, then separately add up the current value of all their weapons, gold, and income. Divide that number in half, add it to all the points from the properties, and boom, you have a winner. Or, 
if your group played really poorly, the player whose bank didn't implode and go belly up by the end of the third year is the winner. <laughs> so that's Euro Crisis in a nutshell. So I got it played twice. Sure. Um, and I got to say, the satire and the theme comes through in spades. Because when I originally had this on the uh, anticipation list for this year, and I was like, eh, it just doesn't. It was it was uh, crowdfunded sure. overseas. And I was like, ah, satire. And it's just hard to get excited Crowd about Crowdfunding. Right, exactly. And so I was like, eh. And so it was easy to discount the game because of that. But I got to say, there were a lot of meaningful and like real decisions in the game. There's tons of interaction because there's only four battlegrounds to fight over. France, Ireland, Spain, and of course, if it's a Euro crisis, it's got to be Greece, right? Right on. So each company is represented differently with a larger or smaller debt track as well as more uh, fewer or more or fewer government tracks which allow more or less kind of messing with said government. For example, Greece has a smaller debt track so it's easier for them to default on their loans, but the with the risk of defaulting quicker comes higher returns on the loans that you grant that country and you choose which country you're going to give loans to each turn when you choose that action and you can only do that once or twice a year so the risk reward is always being calculated by every player as well as there's a little bit of screwage in a good way that if i see you're heavily invested in greece i'm going to do my best to get that debt marker pegged out so you lose all that income plus that you just acquired and now you're not getting that income, and now you end up with you know well, red, uh, your income in the red. If you go too far, you're out of the game. Good playing. Go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> so the game plays in a perfectly appropriate amount of time. Okay. You never, never once did any of us look at our watches or like, wow, this is taking a while. Nothing, because you're only taking one action, uh, and it goes around the table sure. each time, so it moves quick. And you play twice, so that's yeah. a good sign. Yeah, exactly. Uh, production quality is really good, and I gotta say the rule book is really good. Even though it's not a U.S. based game, um, I had no issues with it, which is novel and, and nice. Yes, everything that we had questions about was answered in the rule book. Uh, like I said, played the game twice, and everyone I played with uh, really seemed to like it. And there's more than you would think just by looking and oh, it's satire again, that whole deal. So mm-hmm. the things that maybe some people might not you know, really dig okay. is, well, first off is it's pretty obscure and there's no U S distribution. Right. But the good news is thanks to say Greece and how bad the Euro <laughs> exchange rate on that side is it's almost one to one. It was a uh, dollar, dollar four today. Okay. Uh, to one Euro it's $59 or 59 euros uh, straight from the publisher, which I think includes uh, shipping. So, I mean, 60 bucks, which is lower than MSRP in a lot of the games that we're looking at. Absolutely. Um, So, like I mentioned, there is a fair amount of screwage from the players, uh, you know, playing tug of war, trying to push some countries into defaulting, keeping others from doing so. And so you you have a lot of plates in the air and you don't have enough, you know, time to juggle everything. So where do you put your... So some shenanigans? Oh, absolutely. Okay, cool. There's definitely some of that. But it's... you're, You're choosing the one action in secret... But everyone knows what you've played right. that year. And they know those cards are un- unavailable to you. Granted, in our first couple of plays, we're not really thinking that deep, maybe. But sure. I can see that it's there. Okay. You know what I mean? And last but not least, um, and this might I might be thinking too much of it, but the theme might wrinkle some feathers of those who feel the game is making late light on what is you know a pretty serious topic serious in some stuff. of the countries. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, as far as rating, um, again, only two plays, but Amanda, Jimmy, me, um, Minneapolis, Matt, Lyndon, and German Mike are the people I played with over those two games, and we all really enjoyed it. So I am going to look into getting a copy in 2016. Um, so I don't want to give a rating yet with only two plays, but the fact that I'm wanting a copy should lead people to think that it's probably in a four-ish or sure, so sure, range, sure. and it could move slightly with more plays. Right on. So that's Euro Crisis. Eighteen MS, eighteen Mississippi. It's a 2015 Mark Derrick design. 
and it's produced by Deep Thought Games slash Golden Spike, but it's only available in the 18 Dixie box. So uh, it's a 2-4 to four player 18xx game. Uh, I just recently played it a four-player game, and uh, we were teaching one rookie, one near rookie, and it took about five hours to teach it and play it. I honestly didn't keep track, but Robin was, because I had uh, apparently given her a poor estimate in how long it would take me before I could play a game with her. I heard all about this on my, <laughs> when she picked us up at the oh, airport. Really? She told me all about it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. Um, let's see, 18MS is an introductory 18XX game that, as we'll discuss, offers a more scheduled introduction to some of the 18XX context, or concepts, excuse me, rather than like a sudden and shocking introduction that many, many games of the genre would offer a new player. Um, well, so it, what's happening in this game? It's an 18XX, right? So you're buying and selling stock, running companies, laying track, setry, setry. So it's typical 18, 18xx stuff. No real need to get into that. But here are some key rule features and differences. It's a fixed length game. There's five stock rounds, and each one has two operating rounds. Okay. The trains rust on a schedule, so the two trains don't rust when I buy a four train. The two trains rust on stock round three, for example. Uh, so when the trains rust on a schedule like that, then that's not going to be a shocking thing to a player, right? They can plan ahead for it for a new for a new person. the The players can get loans for emergency train purchases too. Didn't have what? to happen in our game. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa! But, you but didn't take a, a loan? No, but it's a yeah, <laughs> it's a safety net for newbies. Basically, here's the deal though: fifty percent interest if you had to take one. Oh, so yeah, okay. which, yeah. So it's, uh, it's a punitive loan. Yeah. Okay. There are no partial dividends in the game. You're either paying it or you're hoarding it uh, with the assumed stock price adu- um, adjustments. Stocks do drop one per share sold, though. So that's a little more punitive than uh, some of the softer some, games. Right, right, where it's yeah. per block or something. Right. There is a yellow zone in the stock market, too, where the shares won't count against your cert limit. So that's kind of cool that... That features in there. And there's no auction for private companies. At the beginning of the game, every player in turn order will purchase, at face value, a private company. So those are the key rule differences. So here's what I think is cool about 18MS. So I, I really think that what's cool about it is that it's a valid teaching game. The fixed length. At five stock rounds and ten operating rounds, the length of the game is somewhat finite, right? It's still going to be lengthened by players learning their way through it and stuff like that. Um, but it's it's not going to be unduly long because of inefficient operations making the bank last and last and sure, last. Sure, right? way longer than it should, right? Exactly. Yeah. And the tr- with the trains rusting on a schedule, uh, you know, I'm not going to buy a four train and screw you out of all your twos and you're going to go, oh my God, this game. You're right, you, can, you can see it and plan ahead and uh, be prepared for the consequences and, and thus understand those consequences for future games of other titles. And uh, I, I think the game is really about running good companies, but an experienced player can do some shenanigans to have some fun in this game and to teach concepts. And that was my approach to this session, was fun and teaching. My goal wasn't to win, but to teach through doing things. Not to tank the game or anything like that or ruin the experience, but really just to expose different elements that one could encounter in future games of so, 18 So events. something that they might not see themselves if you hadn't done this, whatever it is, right? Like, you, me, Tony, and Chad played this? Yeah. None of these things would probably happen because gotcha. this is about running good companies, right? Okay. So, um, so here's my plan. I was like, I'm going to float the Illinois Central. And that is, in the initial stock round, that's going to be a small but solid earner of a company. But then I'm going to, I'm going to cash it out and float that fifth company. There's only five companies in the game, okay? So I started the game. I only bought four shares. Just so happened that the other players finished floating the company for me, including, including another player who also bought four shares. So it was during the course of a couple stock rounds. Um, I, when I had the chance to buy that fifth share that would cement my ownership of it, I did not, right? Because remember, my plan is to cash out and start that start the L and M. That was right. the company that was open. Uh, so instead, I, I cross invested and diversified and stuff like that, but to a limit, of course. So I think it was in the third stock round. Man, this stock round was oh, was a lot of fun. That other player, one of the other players, sold a share. 
uh, two shares. I did not buy any of that. I let it pass. I, I sold out. Another person, anyway, one, one of the guys, John, stole the company from me. You know, so he experienced um, acquiring a company through effectively hostile takeover, right? And I sold out. And you know what? The IC is just an okay railroad anyway. So uh, it, it, for a while there, it even dipped into yellow territory. So we even the new players got to see that, not count cool. against your cert right. limit and everything. Right. That was very, very cool. Uh, but coming into that last stock round, I, I was definitely in an unenviable position. I was fourth. <laughs> and I don't intend to ever be fourth, right? But sometimes it happens. Uh, and here's the thing. I couldn't hurt the leaders, but I could improve my position at somebody, <clears throat> brain goose, expense. And so um, <laughs> what I did was I I, uh, I kind of neutered and raided the L&M and then dumped it on Matt because he had bought a few more shares of it. And... Uh, so Matt got to see that happen to him. And and you know what? He did a good job with it, man. He had another corporation, so he was able to play some train games and keep that thing running. It, but it did cost him. We flipped positions, basically. Right, you know? right. Um, so, that, so that was really cool, and it really led to some really fun stock rounds where things that were happening that wouldn't ordinarily happen in that game. So um, here's, what the, here's what the new players got to see in that game. Cross-company train buying games. Private companies and their purposes, train rusting and the consequences, but without the train rush. In the importance of uh, tokening and your stations, it's a small, tight board. It really, really is. So it's easy to get tokened out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, corporate takeover with some engineering, corporate dumping with some engineering. Sure. And, um, and the scoring positions changing due to that stuff. So... In the end, uh, I think we have a new 18xx player in the group, and Matt is further, you know, hook planted in cheek kind of a thing with that. So, that, and that was truly the goal, just to expose folks to the amazingly broad and deep space of 18xx games. So, I do feel um, that 1846 is is a better game, obviously, and a better teaching game if someone can handle that. But if not, this is a great one to teach. Tony, Tony, and I both had great opportunities to teach. Did it feel like a real 18xx in that respect, just because of the of the predetermined, the 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 scheduled things to happen? Because that just seems weird. But yet well, it has the yellow area in the stock market to be able to you know try and work a company down in that area. Yeah, I mean this is a teaching game, right? This isn't a you, me, and Chad aren't going to say, hey, let's play 18ms. Would we ever play that? That that's another question. I would. I don't want to play 18 ms with you and chad and tony for example okay gotcha. i think it's purely a teaching instrument okay gotcha and it you... was not boring i i tried my best to make it not boring as sure, well sure sure i get that um so here's a question you might not know the answer to this but because this was chad's copy right or was it right yeah um any idea because you said you it comes in 18 dixie which also comes with 18 georgia and 18 mississippi any idea on a cost on it I want to say it's like a hundred. Eighteen Dixie itself, the yeah. package. It's like two hundred bucks. Oh, is it? It's yeah. that much. Yeah. Okay. So good teaching game, but you're gonna have to. Yeah. If you're an eighteen SX guy, you're probably buying eighteen Dixie. Right, and then oh, I have these other two Correct. that kind of came in. So think of it that way. That was Chad's almost. take, no doubt. Right. Gotcha. Like okay. I'm buying eighteen Dixie. I also have these other games. Cool. As well. So, All right, rock on. Um, it's definitely, I, I'm going to give it a rating of a four, just because it, it's standard eighteen XX fair light, you know. Uh, solid little game, great teaching tool. So uh, if if you're considering 18 Dixie and you also need a teaching game, consider 18 MS. All right, let's talk a little BGG con stuff here. So um, two parts. Part one, let's hear about what you did during the days. Part two, the heavy cardboard gathering was apparently pretty awesome so it it was beyond pretty awesome it right was, on it was yeah shockingly good so tell us about your days at at bgg car all right well um we'll start on tuesday we we had a blizzard <laughs> or we were anticipating a blizzard monday night rolling in uh until tuesday afternoon we were supposed to fly out about 11 a.m 11 30 or so tuesday and we were really worried that the plane wasn't going to get in right long story short uh we only had an hour delay it's there's five of us that travel down together. We fly down. We fly into Love Field, and BGG Con's actually at the DFW airport at Terminal C. And so uh, flying southwest, you fly into Love Field. And so Phil, 
uh, rents a car for all, a huge wagon, uh, for all of us and all our luggage. And then instead of going to the hotel, we go and eat dinner first. And we went to Babe's. Now, Babe's is famous for their fried chicken, and I completely understand why. You go there, you order the protein, you order meat, and all the sides come out family style, okay. and they're bottomless. And dude, this was special. That cool. fried chicken was awesome. So, we got back to the hotel after that, uh, after we hit the grocery store to load up on provisions. Um, we checked in and got our badge ribbons that we had made for fans of the show and anybody that wanted one they turned out awesome dude mm -hmm. i couldn't they couldn't did. have been more happy about that and if you follow us on twitter i'm sure you saw them kimberly uh our roommate we finally got to meet her so we were rooming with somebody we had no idea and vice versa for her which it was probably more awkward for her being oh a married yeah. woman coming in to hang out with us i read her tweets sounds awkward for everybody yeah <laughs> Couldn't have turned out better. She was really, really cool. Uh, 1846, We, uh, I planned on, like I mentioned earlier in the show, I planned on just kind of GMing and teaching uh, games of this. Well, we ran, didn't have all the people show up due to logistics, and that first night can be a little wonky. So I jumped into the game. I was way too tired to play, but after we got started, I really got into it, even though I completely hosed myself. Right. Um, Marcus was a brand new player, and so the three of us, me, Bill, and Asher, were all having fun with it and, and kind of holding his hand where he needed. Marcus did an amazing job. Cool. Ended up winning the game. Cool. <laughs> so that was, he had excellent t-shirt. <clears throat> anyway, right after that, uh, met up with the uh, our buddies from the board game group, uh, Lyndon, Mo, and Brian, mm -hmm. and also ran into German Mike, and we all just kind of sat around drinking a little bit and... That was pretty much the end of the first night. Right on. Which is really day zero because BGG kind right. of doesn't start till Wednesday. So that's the night ended about 2.30 in the morning or so. Wake up early Wednesday morning. About 2.15. Yeah, right. No, 2.45. Uh, so Travis, our buddy from Low Player Count, mm -hmm. he, uh, he brought donuts, which is now two years in a row. Ergo, this is a tradition. Uh, there's a, I forget the name of the donut joint, but they have, like, he brought the Elvis it's banana, yeah. Was it bacon. Is it it, it's not voodoo, mystic or some, it's yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that. But yeah, really, was, I had a coconut cream pie donut that was way too sweet, but really good. Anyway, uh, so that was cool. Um, and a whole bunch of people get in line for registration. And there's 2,400 people trying to get registered. So instead of doing that, we went to breakfast with uh, there at the hotel with the Geek Chat League guys that I'm... Um, uh, buddies with, which includes Cole, the designer of PAX Premier, uh, Roger, who is BGG admin, Skippin, who couldn't make it, but he's our buddy, also an admin, etc., etc. Just hanging out. German Mike was there, so there were like eight or nine of us just catching up, people that we hadn't seen in a year that we just talked to uh, on BGG. So that was fun. Then the line was still massively long at the end of breakfast, mm. so we said, you know what? Cole's like, hey, I can teach you guys Pax Premier. We said, sold. Right. We went up. He taught us that. And that was really, really good. Amanda loved the game. She's in eh on Pax Porphyriana. And you can tell the bones are there from Pax Porphyriana in Pax Premier. But it is completely its own animal. Hmm. And okay. just really, really enjoyable game. So let's see, after that, uh, went and stood in line for about 45 minutes still after that. Uh, got registered. Met up with uh, Paul and Christopher Incow, uh, Min Minneapolis Matt, uh, and Andrew from SpielPro. We had a organized game of Reef Encounter, which, dude, you got to try it again. I'm telling you, nah. it's so good. It was so good. And I'm not just saying that because I won or that. For Paul me, Reef Encounter game. is a brief encounter. Come on, man. That. That's such a disappointment that the only time I can get this game played, because you didn't like it, Amanda didn't like it, is like something like that. Ugh. Anyway, then met up with Nicholas and I and Amanda for some winsome games, and that was the Northern Pacific yeah. that I mentioned. SNTF. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then I did what I tend to really like to do at BGG Con. Whoa. Walk the earth like Kane. I just wander around and gotcha. take pictures and, and do all that. And I really, really enjoy just 
kind of people watching and seeing what all is getting played and what all weird stuff's going on. Geek watching. Yeah. Board game geek. Right. right. So uh, I, I, I do that far more than I probably should, but it's my vacation. I can do that, right? Heck yeah, man. Anyway, so that was fun. Um, German Mike was setting up Demacher. Nice. Uh, and I did a big old tweet storm on Wednesday night mm-hmm. uh, on Twitter just walking through the halls taking pictures of what all's going on and it's just it's cool to meet people that way too and people usually are pretty friendly about that yeah. <laughs> so anyway that was that uh pretty much ended wednesday night thursday not much by way of gaming because thursday morning at uh eight o'clock got went down for the first day of here i stand it was me and roger that were down there first so it was me roger chris chris and Justin, um, and uh, Troy. If Justin's not in the game, the game doesn't happen because this dude is a human encyclopedia of rules. Wow. You ask a question, he'll, he'll be able to just give it to you, or he's super good on his phone, gets the answers. Like, dude is the ultimate guy to play here I stand with cool. or, or whatnot. So I played, I did terrible on the first day, but I had fun, whatever. I did better than I did last year. After that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I pretty much wandered the the vendor halls because there's two vendor halls at BGG Con, right. um, and they're completely separate. And that's I why wandered, there would be two of them, right? Uh, wandered them for two reasons: one, just to kind of see what all's going on and just be a consumer type thing, and the second was to network for the show, but also to touch base for all the donations that people were giving for the gathering later that night. Um, so then from Then on, we ate and got ready for the Heavy Cardboard Gathering, which I'll touch on here in a little bit. So that took the rest of Thursday night. Moving on to Friday. And some of Friday morning. But more, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So then Friday uh, was day two of Here I Stand. And I'll be honest, there's a a side perk to playing Here I Stand at eight in the morning each day. Forces me to get my lazy ass out of bed. Because if I'm not going... I, I, a lot of times I went to bed around 3... Between 3 and 5 in the morning. Yeah. Otherwise I'd be in bed till noon. And then you'd feel like you slept half the day away. Yeah, and yeah, all that. Yeah. Whatever. I could sleep when I got home. Sleep when you're dead. Right. So day two of Here I Stand. Um, quick funny story. There was this... It was turn six, I think, of Here I Stand. And the... Habsburgs could win if I don't sue for peace because uh, I'm not going to go into details, but bottom line, there was like this 40 minute negotiation period between all the powers, except for me. I had one job. The whole table needed me to sue for peace. If I did not sue for peace, the game ends instantly. So everyone's making all these intricate negotiations among one another, right? And it's very procedural, kind of like Demacher, in that there are certain steps and there are certain order in which things happen. So things go around. Is anybody suing for peace? The Ottomans, who I was, act first. So they were like, Ottomans, sue for peace? I said, no, game's over. Everyone just kind of hesitated for a minute, and I'm like, ah, I'm just messing with it. Yes, I'm suing for peace. (laughs) Because it would have given the ultimate story, because the game ends immediately at that point, because the Habsburgs would have won, but they would have kicked me out and beat me up probably. And that wouldn't, but it would have been an awesome story. So anyway, so yeah. Were you able to extract any, uh, no uh, favors, shall we say? I should have. I should No, no, I didn't think about it. I I really didn't. And actually the Habsburgs were like, you had them over a barrel. You should have demanded without Romania. I'm suing. I I, I should have demanded cards and all the other guys could have said, no, I'm not going to, you're going to lose as much as we are. And I should have just, I held them over a barrel next year. Damn it, next year. So anyway, after that, hung out with friends, played a couple games. Um, we went to dinner, Fogo de Chow. There were 10 of us. It was uh, the board game group guys. It was Dave Lamb, our buddy from our game group, who without him, this wall of games doesn't yeah. happen because he muled everything back. Huge thank you to David. And also, damn you, David. If you weren't there, I wouldn't have gotten all these games. And Amanda wouldn't be... Well, whatever. Moving on. <laughs> Dinner uh, with them, Roger, uh, Steven, a couple other guys. Uh, and then afterwards, more gaming with friends. And that was the night till about 5 in the morning. We ended up playing the first game of Time's Up. So Time's Up, party game. I thought you played it with us before. But is, that, what it, 
It's the one where it's a name and you can describe it however much and no. And somebody guesses it. The second round, you're only allowed to, same clues, you're only allowed to say one word. The third round, you can't say anything. You can only pantomime. And the group we played with the, this first night, serious people. They took it. Like, point of order, so-and-so said this, that card should not be counted. And I, a few of us were just looking wow. at each other. We've been, all, all been drinking. <laughs> and we're like, you're kidding, right? This is time's up and it's four in the morning. Really? You're really? <laughs> but in the end, it was a hysterical time. A lot of laughs. Had a good time. Went to bed. <laughs> Saturday, we met up, uh, Amanda and I met up with Yeroon from Splatter. Uh, we had planned, um, busted out a couple games, uh, win some games, right. with uh, our buddy from BoardGameTables.com, Chad. That's Open Face Chad, because right. long story, whatever. Uh, had a great time with that. Uh, we talked shop a little bit, talked a little Martin Wallace, John Boer uh, with him, and one of the things that uh, I was kind of busting your own balls about a little bit was I was like, did you not expect to s three printings? Really? Did you not expect? And he's like, and his, uh, his girlfriend slash significant other slash common law wife, Bianca was with her, with him. They've been together for 15 years, whatever. Right on. He, they were like, no, we had no idea. And I looked at him. I said, everybody on the planet knew you guys were going to kill it with food chain magnate. Everyone but you two, I guess, right? right? And yours, right? And they were like, yeah, I guess so. And Yeroon actually went out of his way to mention that he credits us in our show, in our interview, and in our review of the game to going a long way to selling all those games. So I, I, it's impossible to quantify, but that was pretty cool to hear. That right was, on. That was pretty special. That was, and on Saturday, all day, he was wearing our t-shirt. That was cool. That was, that was that was just awesome. In the end, he's just a dude. Yeah, you man. know, really cool. It was great meeting him and Bianca. But I gotta say, that was not really a bucket list type. But I mean, if you were to meet like a, a sports, you know, icon that you've are been a fan of, same idea. That was just that was just damn cool. You know right what on. I mean? So anyway. So fast forward to Saturday night. This is the last night of the con, and I am completely exhausted at this point. I've slept like three, four hours a night at most. The last thing I want to do is play any real games. So Travis sends me a text, and he's like, hey, we're up in room 11 whatever. One, uh, one of the big gaming rooms, uh, conference rooms upstairs. He's like, we're going to play a bunch of party games. Why don't you come up? And I was like, yeah, yeah, all right, fine. So went up there. And the first game we play is a fake artist goes to New York. And long story short, uh, it, a dry erase, one person writes a word on all of the tiles and writes an X on one of them. And everyone has to draw a single line, goes around the table once to try and figure out what this thing is. So you're supposed to let everyone else know by what you're drawing, this community drawing, hey, I know what this is, but not enough to where the person, the fake artist, knows. Well, Scott leveled us all and gave us all X's, and nobody knew. And so we were just drawing some weird abstract thing. All right, whatever. The yeah, story yeah. had to be there. All right, fine. But the funniest moment. Thrilling radio there. Sorry. The funniest <laughs> moment of the con and something that, uh, well, well, it truly one of the best times I've had in years. Cool. Playing time. That part resonates. <laughs> Playing time's up. Long story short. Uh, Scott, again, he's pantomiming. He can't say what the card is. We've already gone through Mental him a few image. times, right? Uh, and so he looks like he, he ate a lemon and he, sh I can't tell this on the radio. I can't, I can't. Anyway, hysterical time. I had about eight of us in tears, hyperventilating, bending, just Patrick tweeted out a picture right in the moment. He had the wherewithal to take a picture yeah. when we're all busting up. And it's going to end up being one of my favorite pictures of all time. So that was, yeah, they, just that, it, it's that right there that explains why BGG Con is just so good and why it's a must go to. Cool. Um, it's very, very much so more about the people and spending time with them and hanging out and whatever than it is about the game. It doesn't matter what games we play. So. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, Sunday morning played Euro Crisis with uh, with Matt and uh, and Jimmy, 
and uh, another guy, and uh, <laughs> and then called it a day, and that was it, and then we flew out, and that was it. But uh, yeah, it's the highlight of my year every year. I say that, but with HeavyCon coming up, I'm hoping that eclipses it, um, because a lot of the people that I enjoy hanging out with at Heavy at PGG Con hopefully are coming to HeavyCon. Right on. And worst comes the worst. We'll catch them again at BGG Con, and we will next year. We, we, you and I, and record a damn show there because, yeah, uh, a lot of people want us to. All right, so I want to talk about the heavy cardboard gathering, but before we get into it, I, I understand it was a great success, and I, I, I'm really proud of the work you did, and I want to thank you for doing that, and your wife Amanda too for her excellent assistance in the endeavor. So I, appreciate I wish that. I was there, man, but good job, partner. Thank you. I appreciate it. And honestly, without Amanda being there, no chance I death. could have handled it. Was it. Yeah. Death. yeah. It, it it was it was nuts. I couldn't have done it without her. So thanks. So tell me about it, man. Eighty two people? Was that yeah, the number our, you told me? Yeah. So let's back up at the very beginning okay. here. Beep, uh, beep. About a week and a half That's two up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a week and a half, two weeks before I, I Emailed to some of the publishers and other vendors who were going to attend mm-hmm. and said, hey, do you guys want to donate anything? Send Whatever. us goodies. Right. No, not send us. I'll come pick them up. Yeah. yeah. No, no. It, there, were, there was thought behind this. Anyway, so I heard back from most of them, even the ones that turned us down. At least they responded. So that was yeah. nice. That was cool. Um, so the amount of things, though, that the various companies and people offered was astounding so here we go yeah yeah i want to know like who donated stuff okay. and everything too so, all right name names buddy all right so artana uh donated tesla versus edison sweet uh the broken token gave a gift certificate for a custom insert or other item that oh. the winner wanted yeah very cool cardboard clothing our yep, buddy yep, justin yep, yep, yep. uh donated a, 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 he and his partner um a t-shirt of the winner's choice cool uh check games edition but really the thanks goes to Paul Grogan on this one. He works for Check Games. Sure, sure. sure. He was my point of contact and right, everything right, for right. it. Um, he brought in Dungeon Lords Anniversary Edition, the big box one that they were selling for 110 bucks there at the con. So that was really awesome of him. So Ooh, thanks over a lot. The top, there. Right on. Golden Egg Games. Uh, so Elad was really really cool. He and the whole crew came up to the gathering as well. Nice. They brought two copies of Prime Time. One to give away. One to demo there, and for us to have as a review copy. Oh, very cool. And also said here, if you want a copy of Florenza, and I was like, I got one already. Right, I right. appreciate it. Thank you. Just really ab- above and beyond. Uh, our buddy Don from Nightworks. Right. He offered up a copy of either Hands in the Sea or yes. Forged in Steel. Uh, and Asher is the one who actually won that and already got that hooked up for him, so that's right. cool. Uh, Level 99 Games donated a copy of Argent the Consortium. That was very, uh, very cool. Mayday Games. Um, <laughs> so I yeah. offered to pick them up at the con. They're like, no, no, we'll just send them to you. And they sent just a oodles of sleeves. Because I asked specifically, hey, yeah, send sleeves. And Dude, sleeves boy, are did handy. They. Yeah. So they sent a whole bunch of those. So that was cool. Meeple Source um, gave a gift certificate to help out pimping out games yeah. for the winner. Very cool. Stronghold Games. Old, uh, old Mr. Bonacore there. Uh, Jumped at the chance to donate a copy of Panamax. Hmm. That was nice. Uh, we gave away... Thank you. F- for our stuff, we gave away a couple of our t-shirts, a hoodie, and a stack of our custom coast... Uh, you know, uh, Heavy drink coasters. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. And uh, finally, Wormwood, um, who, if you don't know, is kind of the uh, geek chic of dice towers and dice trays. A really high-end exotic woods, that type thing. Okay. They donated a dice tray made of uh, babingo wood. Whoa. Which... That sounds made up. Uh, yeah, I, That's I, how rare that is, I guess. I uh, was pretty blown away wow. that they they were willing to do that. Gorgeous. So that was cool. Yeah, oh, it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, so we... Originally, I had booked a room there, uh, or reserved, not really booked, but reserved a room uh, for space for 50 people. Because... I'll be honest, I would much rather have 20 people show up in a 50-man room than uh, 20 show up in a 75-man room, because that wouldn't look as bad. Sure. And I was, I had no idea what to expect, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so we got there a few minutes before 8, uh, Amanda and I, and uh, some other people helping us mule stuff up there. And 
it started filling up really, really fast. <laughs> uh, so quite a few industry folks came, designers, publishers, developers, podcasters, Yarun and Bianca came right. up and Sports stayed talk. for the whole time. Uh, our buddy Paul Grogan, Travis from Low Player Count, uh, Paul Inkow, who's the developer of Panamax, Kanban, and The Gallerist. Right. Bonacore made an appearance and hung out for a while, as did uh, Marcus Mueller and uh, Uvo Eckhart from Artana and Academy Games, respectively. Uh, the guys from the Monster Facebook group and friends of ours, uh, Mo, Linden, and Brian. Right, right. And last and certainly not least, uh, the highlight for me, honestly, was... A whole bunch of fans of the show who I've kind of gotten to know interacting right. between the guild and Twitter and everything else. Um, and a bunch of friends that were at HeavyCon last year. Um, just, like I said, I was worried we, I hadn't, I was hoping for 40 or 50. It, it, so, you know, prepared for 20 and 82 people came and stayed almost for the entire time. So the room was for 50, so... Uh... Yeah, we had an overflow room. Did you, like, just sardine everybody in there? No, no. It, for When we gave away the prizes, it got warm in that room. Mm -hmm. It was literally standing room only. It was it was amazing um, and terrifying at the same time. But, no, as, as people came in, it was insanely loud because you had 50 people in this room. I mean, it was maxed out. Yeah. We had an, uh, a room that we didn't... A reserve that was just open gaming that I said, hey, go next door. Just conquer the room. Yeah, pretty much. And so people did. Did and you see, uh, what games did you see played? Oh, God. Everything. Was there a lot going on? Yeah, there there, there really were. Um, God bless them. Phil uh, played uh, a game of Food Chain Magnate. Um, there were quite a few winsome games being cool. played. There was Rolling Stock being nice. played. Mombasa. Deluvia Project. Um, Skippin's going to kill me. I, I want to say it was Pacific War. It, he'll tell me that I'm right or wrong. They were playing that. And I tried to play Noya Hyman. I tried to teach the board game group guys while I was sitting there and Amanda's handing out tickets left and right. Right, right. And I'm trying to teach these guys Noya Hyman, and I keep getting interrupted yeah, every 20 not seconds. Not practicable. And we tried to play through it. It was it was horrible, and I feel bad for trying to... I hope they didn't not like the game, because that was just butchered. But in the future, I've learned, don't try and play games. Sorry, not the time, right? Yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, the amazing. So, um, how long was the gathering? Because I thought I heard some crap about, like, 3.15 in the morning. Right, so <laughs> it was scheduled. Which is awesome. I had the room booked from 8 p.m. to midnight, right. knowing that nobody was going to book it sure, after midnight. Sure, sure. So basically the rest of the night. At 11 o'clock... We had 11, 11, 10 or so. I had the, uh, we did all the giveaways. Gotcha. And how we, how we did that was drew a ticket out of the hat, called them. They came up before they picked anything. They picked the next number and I read that off so that they could choose keep whatever. A, yeah, keep, keep a cycle going. going. Yeah. Um, and got a picture with everybody and, th and that was really cool. Uh, but then I'd say about 11, 45, 12, I tapped out. I was just... I was beyond exhausted from the adrenaline and everything else going on. And Dave Eisen told me that they were up there playing That's various right, yeah. games. And, and not just them, but other people. till like you said, quarter after three in the morning, which is awesome. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. know any other word than that. Nope. Sounds that way, buddy. It, uh, so, big thank you to everybody that came and that took time out of their BGG Con to... Spend time with us and, yeah. and show that they it mattered enough for them to come out. And the fact that they, they were there the whole time and many of them stayed after the uh, sure. after the giveaway right, and right, stuff. Right. It wasn't just for, ooh, free stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we just totally appreciate that support. Humbling. It, Absolutely. It was the best way to describe it. I just, I was, you know how hard it is for me to not have any words. And I was just like, I don't know, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, seriously, thank you to... Everybody, media folk that came, and, and, and designers, publishers, all, all you people, um, thank you. But especially to all our listeners, because honestly, without y'all, right. we're not doing this. I mean, we're doing it to have fun, but you guys keep us going. So genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, really appreciate it. Thanks. And uh, 
bigger, better, and a roomier room next year, I promise. Heck yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> well, before we go, as we always do, remind everyone how to contact Heavy Cardboard, please. Contact at heavycardboard.com. Send us emails. We love hearing from you guys and gals. At Heavy Cardboard on Twitter. Now that I'm back from BGG Con and off vacation, I'm back to being active on there. Uh, our BGG Guild 2044, come join the discussions. That's cool. And if you haven't left us an iTunes review, hey, get an account, leave a review, <laughs> and delete it. If that's, that's cool. We're fine. We're just, yes, leave us one, please. Anonymous works. I guess. I don't know. I don't know if you can, but sure. Thank you. It, please do. Last but not least, uh, our website, heavycardboard.com, Facebook, Heavy Cardboard. Thanks as always, guys. Cool. And thanks to Game Surplus. Appreciate your sponsorship, guys. Uh, if you're listening, Velma only has a handful of those Noya Heimat copies left, so games at gamesurplus.com. Hey, Velma, I want one. That's what I did today. So check out their site as well, www.gamesurplus.com, and again, tell them Heavy Cardboard sent you. Yeah, email them, let them know that you heard it on the show, whether it's that or anything else. And if they don't have it in stock, send an email. A lot of times she'll uh, she'll hunt it down for you. Absolutely. So thanks again um, for indulging us, I guess, for the BGG Con episode. Um, if nothing else, I hope I get you guys excited, and by guys I mean all our listeners, about wanting to come. Try. I'm telling you, if it's at all possible, it's an awesome, awesome time. And we'd love to love to meet y'all, hang out, BS, have a drink, go eat, play games, whatever. So, yeah. We'll, well catch y'all in a couple weeks. I think yep. we're talking Mombasa. Mombasa. See which, you guys on episode 38. Yep. Catch y'all later. Happy December. <laughs>